Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Narcissists do not respect individuality. They fail to acknowledge that each of us is unique, with our own strengths and superior qualities. When a narcissist steps out of their illusion and mindset, believing they have discovered something better than what they had with you, they often fall into what is known as shiny object syndrome. This refers to their tendency to jump from one person to another, thinking the new person is the best thing ever. Once they move on to this new relationship, they often take to social media to showcase their new partner. By doing this, they aim to provoke feelings of jealousy and insecurity in you. They want you to feel inadequate, as if their new choice is somehow better than you. You might find yourself thinking, well, they have moved on to someone else. However, it's essential to recognize that sometimes this new relationship is actually a downgrade. Many of us can look at their new partner and think, they really downgraded, that's what they did. But let's be honest, not everyone sees it that way. Sometimes, due to circumstances beyond our control, we might find ourselves comparing our worth to that of the new supply. The devil, so to speak, loves to make you feel ungrateful about your unique qualities and who you are as a person. This can lead you to question your creator and wonder, why do I look this way? Even if you realize that the new supply is not an upgrade, you might still find yourself comparing yourself to them, thinking, hold on a minute, I am much better than they are. Meanwhile, the narcissist is caught up in a chaotic phase. They experience a transition from the relationship they had with you to the new supply. In their minds, they believe they have found a gift from above, and they view the new supply as something special and extraordinary. However, the new supply is often unaware of the full truth. They might have been in contact with the narcissist while the narcissist was still with you, and they likely heard a one-sided story about how poorly the narcissist was treated in the previous relationship. The new supply may also offer the narcissist support, promising to be there for them in ways that others have not. Many of these new supplies are toxic individuals themselves. While some people enter relationships without knowing the full context, such as a narcissist pretending to be single, others knowingly engage with someone who is still attached to another person. While I am not here to judge anyone's choices, pursuing a relationship under these circumstances is unlikely to lead to a positive outcome. A lot of these new supplies are aware of our existence. They have in-depth knowledge about us, including personal details and secrets that we shared with the narcissist. This information is not just surface level. It includes the emotional stories and intimate moments that we confided in the narcissist. The narcissist often shares this information with the new supply as a way to bond with them, telling them our whole story. This is part of how the narcissist processes their feelings after a breakup, but it also reveals their manipulative nature. Eventually, there comes a time when the narcissist starts to experience a reality check. Although there is no specific timeline for when this realization occurs, it does happen. The timing may vary between different narcissists, but since they share similar traits and characteristics, they all arrive at a similar conclusion. They begin to compare their new supply to us, and while they may initially project confidence and claim that this new person is better, the truth often hits them hard. They soon discover that the new supply is not as fulfilling as they had hoped. At first, the narcissist may feel slightly uneasy. They might think, okay, this doesn't feel as good as I expected. This feeling comes from being trapped in a delusion. It's similar to seeing a mirage in a desert. You might think you are seeing a pool of fresh water, only to find out that you are actually swallowing sand. This realization can be jarring for the narcissist as they confront the emptiness of their choice. Despite this unsettling feeling, many narcissists have already committed to living with their new supply. They may have moved in together and become quite close, which complicates matters further. At this point, the narcissist begins to compare what they have lost with what they currently possess. They realize that they have let go of something truly valuable, their connection with us. To them, we were not just partners, we were prized possessions. Narcissists often view their partners as objects they own, rather than as individuals with their own identities. In this context, they have carelessly discarded us, like tossing away a bag of diamonds into the dirt. They have given up something precious without fully understanding the consequences of their actions. 
Now, on the other side, they face a lot of drama and emotional turmoil. They have burned bridges with us, often dismissing our worth and telling us we are nothing. Some of the stories about narcissists and their new supplies can be shocking. For instance, I have heard of situations where a narcissist and their new supply openly compare their sexual compatibility with their previous partner, claiming that the new supply is better. This kind of behavior demonstrates just how toxic and manipulative these individuals can be. In my own experience, the narcissist would never have made such a blatant comparison, knowing full well how I would react. Such statements would only serve to disgust me further. Narcissists are often aware of their partner's feelings and sensitivities, but they choose to disregard them in favor of their own ego. As time goes on, these narcissists are with their new supply, but they are increasingly aware of what they have lost. Each day that passes brings more comparisons and regrets. Remember, narcissists do not respect individuality. The new supply, especially if they knew about us, tends to be toxic. They often contribute to the emotional chaos and manipulation that surrounds the narcissist. But as I always say, the new supply came along and picked up what we might consider our trash, and in doing so, they removed some of the drama and worries from our lives. They took away what was no longer valuable to us. So, why should we be upset? We can't really be angry about it, because, after all, they took away something we didn't want anymore. When we look at things from a higher perspective, it helps us gain clarity. I encourage everyone to adopt a bird's eye view of their situation. When we are caught up in our emotions and feelings, it can cloud our judgment, and this is precisely where the narcissist thrives. They feed off our emotional turmoil and vulnerability. However, as we begin to separate ourselves from those feelings, we start to experience a shift in our mindset. This process is crucial for healing. It signifies the evolution of our self, allowing us to see things differently, so much so that the actions of the narcissist no longer affect us in the same way. Imagine this, you might see them moving on, getting married, and starting a family. But deep down, you understand the reality of the situation. You know that they are merely trying to cover up their emotional cracks. This is a common tactic for narcissists, they attempt to project an image of happiness and success, all while hiding the truth of their internal struggles. When we approach our circumstances from a realistic standpoint, we can better understand what is happening. The narcissist may appear to be thriving with their new supply, but it is essential to recognize that they are often just putting on a facade. They may seem okay on the surface, but internally, they are grappling with their own issues. Now, let's take a moment to address something important. If you enjoy the content, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps with the algorithm and allows others to find this information as well. I appreciate every single one of you who takes the time to do this, it really means a lot and encourages me to continue sharing helpful insights. Returning to the topic at hand, it is crucial to understand that narcissists are typically not accountable individuals. They struggle to take responsibility for their actions and the mistakes they make. When they realize they have lost you, their prized possession, it is a painful experience for them. They do not handle loss well, especially when it involves something of value. In their mind, it is much easier to place blame on the new supply rather than accept their role in the situation. They may think, I lost my ex because of you, but the reality is far more complicated. Instead of directly addressing their feelings, they often create drama and chaos. They will complain about trivial matters, express frustration, and engage in a cycle of blame that ultimately distracts them from their own shortcomings. Now, many people wonder, how can we be sure the new supply is not a good person? It is important to consider this carefully. If the new supply were truly a good person, they would not have been engaging with the narcissist while they were still in a relationship with us. Even if we want to give them the benefit of the doubt, we must recognize that their actions speak volumes about their character. Let's assume for a moment that they are indeed a good person who was misled by the narcissist. If that were the case, it still raises questions about their judgment. A person of good character would typically not engage with someone who is already committed to another relationship. They may have been deceived, but their willingness to interact with the narcissist speaks to a lack of discernment. 
The narcissist often fails to recognize the importance of healing. They do not give themselves the necessary time to process their emotions and recover from past relationships. Even if they find what appears to be the best person in the world as their new supply, it is crucial to understand that human beings are not designed to have multiple partners throughout their lives. In many cultures, especially in the Western world, there is a prevailing belief that having multiple partners is liberating and beneficial. Society promotes the idea of casual relationships and one-night stands as something positive. However, this lifestyle can be detrimental to our biology and emotional well-being. Engaging in numerous relationships can lead to physical and emotional harm. Our bodies and minds are not equipped to handle such constant changes in intimacy. The effects of multiple partners can manifest as soul ties, attachment issues, and even codependency problems. This lack of stability is not conducive to healthy emotional development. In contrast, when you emerge from a relationship with a narcissist, you may find yourself taking the time to heal. You might spend time alone, reflecting on your experiences, reading, and watching videos that help you understand what you went through. You may have tried dating again, but quickly realized that it didn't feel right for you. This self-awareness is a sign of growth. You understand that you need time to be on your own and process your feelings. The narcissist, however, does not operate in this way. From the moment they enter a relationship, they often move swiftly from one partner to another without taking the time to heal from their previous connections. If you think back to your time with the narcissist, you may remember how they frequently spoke about their ex-partners. They painted their exes as toxic and harmful, and you believed their narrative. They shared stories of how their exes mistreated them, using this as a way to garner sympathy and attention from you. This tendency to dwell on past relationships is their way of coping. They create a delusional narrative in their heads, convincing themselves that their exes were the worst people imaginable. As empaths, many of us have a natural tendency to want to help and heal others. We often step into the role of the savior, trying to fix the wounds of the narcissist without realizing that we are dealing with a person who fundamentally lacks the ability to heal themselves. Every time the narcissist spoke about their ex, they were not simply sharing their past, they were still emotionally attached to those memories. They were not openly admitting, I miss my ex, or I am comparing you to my ex, and you do not measure up. Instead, they used these discussions to manipulate our emotions and keep us engaged in their narrative. This brings me to an important point for those who may be skeptical about the nature of the new supplies in the narcissist's life. Many of these new partners are often toxic themselves. Even if they seem to be better on the surface, the narcissist's inability to accept a healthy relationship stems from their unresolved issues. They have not healed from their previous relationships, and they carry a great deal of emotional baggage into their new connections. This cycle of moving from one partner to another is not a genuine process of healing, it is merely a way to avoid dealing with their own demons and history. I recall a specific incident where the narcissist I was involved with often described their ex as terrible. They claimed their ex was the worst person in the world, detailing all the negative experiences they had. However, as our relationship progressed, they shockingly stated, my ex treated me better than you are treating me now. This statement was a classic example of triangulation, a manipulation tactic where the narcissist creates a comparison between their current partner and an ex to sow doubt and insecurity. At that moment, I was filled with rage and confusion. I could not understand how someone could claim their ex was so awful and then use that very person as a benchmark against me. It was a painful realization that I had fallen into the trap of triangulation not recognizing the signs that I was dealing with a narcissist at the time. My experience with a covert narcissist illustrates some critical points about their behavior and how they interact with new supplies. When I reflect on the things they said to me, it becomes clear that many of you may be experiencing similar situations with your own narcissists. They are likely speaking about you to their new partners in a way that distorts the truth. Some of these new supplies may seem appealing or admirable but the reality is often quite different. Narcissists do not simply transition from a valuable person like you to someone who is genuinely great. Instead, they tend to monkey branch, which means they quickly move to the next available option without a pause for reflection or healing. 
They often latch onto the nearest opportunist, someone who may not bring real value to their lives. This behavior reveals a significant truth. Many of the new supplies are, in fact, quite impressionable or easy to manipulate. The narcissist may tell the new supply things similar to what they once told me. Even when I expressed my anger and frustration, they would apologize, but never truly mean it. This same dynamic is likely occurring with the new supply, where the narcissist claims, "I've lost them because you turned me against them." This statement is a form of triangulation, a tactic used by narcissists to pit people against one another to gain emotional supply. Triangulation is a manipulation strategy that allows the narcissist to draw attention and sympathy from the new supply while simultaneously blaming you. They are aware of your worth, and they utilize this knowledge to create drama. They do this because they thrive on the emotional chaos that follows. It's important to understand that deep down, they often blame the new supply for the loss of you. When we analyze their behavior, it raises questions. How is it possible that they moved on so quickly? This rapid transition is not natural. In many cases, they had someone lined up before the previous relationship even ended. As painful as it may be to acknowledge, the truth is that they were likely engaging with the new supply while still involved with you. They operate under a delusion that they are moving on to greener pastures, believing that their new choice is a better fit for their lives. However, once they settle into this new relationship, They often realize that they have made a mistake. This realization can lead to feelings of regret within the narcissist. They struggle to cope with these feelings and often do not know how to make amends. Instead, they tend to burn bridges, leaving a trail of emotional destruction behind them. Some may even be fearful of reaching out to you again, a tactic known as hoovering. Many of you might think you have not experienced hoovering. But it is likely that you have, especially in the early stages of your separation. Consider this: at the beginning of your breakup, you may have received calls, texts, or other forms of communication from the narcissist. These attempts to reconnect were hoovering tactics designed to reel you back in. They may have realized early on that they made a mistake and wanted to test the waters. However, because they had already smeared your name to their friends, family, and any supporters they could rally. Often referred to as flying monkeys, it became challenging for them to approach you again without facing judgment. Narcissists are skilled pretenders. They will maintain the facade of happiness for as long as possible, convincing others and perhaps themselves that they are content. Yet beneath the surface, what truly occurs in the mind of a narcissist is a blame game. They often hold the new supply responsible for losing you, despite their initial claims that you were the problem. You, as an empath, are incredibly special. Your ability to see through their manipulations and recognize your worth sets you apart. The narcissist is acutely aware that you no longer view them through the lens of fuzzy love goggles that once clouded your judgment. They know that you have gained clarity and that you deserve better. This understanding leads them to a strategic decision. They may choose to leave you alone for a while, believing that eventually you will come back to them. They might think, if I keep my distance, they will calm down, stop being angry, and eventually return to me. This mindset reflects their deep-seated need for control and validation. This is the mindset that many narcissists operate within. Reflecting on my own experience, my narcissist took an unusually long time to attempt hoovering me again. Initially, they reached out soon after our separation, but the next attempt I received came about four years later. When they finally contacted me with a simple "Hi, how you doing?", I responded in a rather cold manner, suggesting they might have contracted a disease. I won't specify the disease to avoid triggering anyone, but my response was intentionally harsh. This interaction was particularly revealing because the narcissist used the name of a mutual friend when they reached out. They created a fake profile on a dating app, and it took me by surprise to realize it was them. I had experienced similar situations before, where they would engage with me through various fake profiles, pretending to be someone else. Looking back, I can see that I may have unknowingly interacted with their other identities before I became aware of their manipulative behavior. As a result of these experiences, I no longer use dating apps. The thought of them being on every platform I might consider is unsettling. 
They believed that eventually, I would relent and return to them, that I would reach a point of vulnerability and express a desire to reconcile. This is the moment they are waiting for, the moment when I might say, I want you back. I urge you all, please do not give in to this temptation. I feel it is important to share something that I have not addressed extensively before. While I often emphasize the importance of remaining alone for your healing journey, I must also acknowledge the darker side of solitude. Being alone can be a double-edged sword, it can either strengthen you or lead you into deeper struggles. You will undoubtedly face challenging times. Many people refer to this phase as the dark night of the soul. Although I may not be an expert on this concept, I can attest that solitude can facilitate significant personal growth. However, it is not without its difficulties. You will experience intense feelings of loneliness, and during these times, it is crucial to be cautious about who you allow into your life. If you're not careful, you might invite negative influences that could hinder your progress. I have become extremely selective about who I let into my life, especially when it comes to romantic relationships. While friendships can be approached with a bit more flexibility, romantic connections require heightened vigilance. In stark contrast, narcissists are not discerning about the individuals they choose to involve themselves with. They often rush into new relationships without considering the potential consequences. Additionally, there is the possibility that the narcissist may have encountered another narcissist. The range of people they could be involved with is vast and unpredictable. Some of you may believe they have found a genuinely nice person, while others may suspect they have simply found another narcissist. The truth is, the potential outcomes are endless. They might have even found someone who is easily manipulated but such individuals will not provide the same level of emotional supply that a strong person like you could. What they truly loved about you was the fire and resilience that you brought to the relationship. They were drawn to your strength, even if they ultimately took advantage of it. You were not a complete pushover, you had qualities that made you special, and this is something they recognized. Now, having lost you, they are likely feeling frustrated with their new supply. They are playing a waiting game hoping that you will eventually feel lonely and miss them, leading you to express a desire to come back to them. It's important to understand the mindset that can occur in such situations. You might find yourself surrounded by potential new partners, yet the only person you can focus on is the narcissist. This fixation can feel overwhelming and isolating. I have experienced this myself, where despite having other options, all I wanted was to be with them. This intense longing can be quite distressing, as it clouds your judgment and makes it difficult to see the reality of the situation. I've been in that dark place, and I have emerged from it stronger than before. The last person I would ever want to be with is the narcissist. In fact, if it came down to just the two of us on earth, I would earnestly tell God, please, create me another mate. I do not want to be with them. That's how deeply I despise them. My feelings are resolute, and I will never back down. The narcissist believed they understood me completely, just as they may think they know you well. But they are profoundly mistaken. Everything they think they know about you is wrong on so many levels. They thought you would crumble under pressure, they thought you would fold and come back to them. Now, this healing journey you are on is a significant and transformative moment in your life. It is a defining experience that the universe has placed in front of you. Yes, you may endure painful nights filled with loneliness and self-doubt, but I promise you that over time, you will start to appreciate your own company more than anything else. There will be moments when you find joy in solitude. Personally, I often feel drained after social interactions, even with friends. Some friendships can be particularly exhausting, and I find that I need time alone to recharge. If I spend time with a few friends, I require significant alone time afterward to regain my energy. I have become a solitary person, and it would take someone truly special to pull me out of my comfort zone. I have many important things to focus on, such as my YouTube channel and other personal projects. This is the kind of focus you also need to cultivate in your life. It's crucial to direct your energy toward your personal growth and healing. I realize this discussion has veered off topic, but I want to stress that it is not all sunshine and rainbows for the narcissist and their new supply. 
I assure you, they harbor resentment and frustration towards the new supply. The narcissist feels anger because they have lost the most precious gift they ever had, someone as unique and valuable as you. This channel is dedicated to those who are chosen and to empaths. If you identify as an empath, you know you possess special qualities that set you apart. It is also essential to clarify a common misconception. Many of you might think you are narcissists, but you are not. I have encountered this belief repeatedly in my sessions and through comments. A true narcissist does not watch videos like this and wonder if they are a narcissist. They do not question their behavior or motives. The very fact that you are reflecting on your actions and feelings is clear evidence that you are not a narcissist. What you are experiencing is a sign of empathy, your tendency to consider your past actions and feel guilt. It is important to remember that you should not feel guilty for anything you did in response to the narcissist's behavior. They have caused you harm on multiple levels, and you should never carry the burden of guilt for your reactions. There is such a thing as reactive abuse, and I have created videos on that topic if you are interested. Narcissists have a way of bringing out the worst in you, and that is not your fault. Returning to the main topic, it is crucial to understand that the narcissist is currently playing a waiting game. They have lined up this new supply while still involved with you. Now, they find themselves in a situation where they recognize they have made a mistake. They want you back, but they are uncertain about how to approach you again. Their initial strategy may involve waiting for you to reach out to them, thinking that if you take that step, you will build a bridge back to them. I implore you, please do not reach out to them. Do not express a desire to reconcile. You need to sever all connections with them, as if performing a lobotomy on your thoughts about them. Cut them out completely from your life and mind. Leave them with their new supply, and do not compare yourself to anyone else, including the new person in their life. It took me a considerable amount of time to discover my meaning and purpose in life. This journey required extensive inner work and deep reflection. You, too, will find your way. It is important to recognize that you may encounter setbacks along the way. For instance, you might start a business that does not succeed. That is perfectly okay, I have experienced failure in business as well. However, during that time, being engaged in the business served as a valuable distraction from the narcissist in my life. It provided me with a focus and helped me shift my energy away from the negativity that surrounded me. As you embark on your own healing journey, I encourage you to take your time. Allow yourself the space to rest and recharge. Consider traveling solo, whether that means exploring new places abroad or simply taking a holiday to a nearby destination. If financial constraints are a concern, have faith that the means will come to you. Believe that you already possess the resources you need to enjoy life. Engage in activities that bring you joy, such as walking in nature or spending time outdoors. It's perfectly fine if you are listening to this video while in bed or starting your day with it. What matters is that you are making an effort. By watching this content and being open to learning, you are already doing the important work necessary for your growth. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who is part of this channel. I truly appreciate each one of you because you connect with my message on a deeper level. You understand my heart and the essence of what I am trying to convey. While my way of speaking may not always be perfect, I strive to share my thoughts in the best way I can. I am thankful that you all reciprocate my sentiments and understand the importance of mutual support and connection. We will all find someone who shares this sense of reciprocity. Now, let's shift our focus away from the narcissist. It is essential to forget about them and remove them from your thoughts entirely. Do not allow feelings of jealousy to take root, remember that they are digging their own grave. They initially attempted to create a situation that would bury you but now they find themselves trapped in the hole they have dug. Leave them there, do not offer them any assistance or support. The narcissist is likely making their life more complicated with their new supply. I promise you, they are blaming this new supply for the loss of you. If you could observe them from a distance, you would witness the chaos and drama unfolding in their lives. The new supply likely harbors feelings of jealousy towards you, wishing they could be in your place. There is another crucial point to consider. The narcissist is playing a waiting game. 
they are hoping for you to initiate contact and rebuild the bridge back to them. This is their first tactic. In future videos, I will delve deeper into this topic, but for now, it is important to recognize this behavior. Another strategy employed by the narcissist is trying to mold their new supply into a replica of you. They may encourage the new supply to engage in the same activities you once did, such as cooking your favorite meals, watching your preferred movies, or even dressing in a way that resembles your style. In some cases, the new supply may even start to change their appearance to mirror yours. I have witnessed this behavior firsthand with my own narcissist, where the new supply began to grow their hair in a manner similar to mine. It is astonishing how they attempt to recreate aspects of you in someone else. However, it is essential to understand that the new supply will never truly be you. You possess a unique identity and experiences that cannot be replicated. If the new supply is a pushover, they may go to great lengths to imitate you, but ultimately, they will only serve as a constant reminder to the narcissist of who you are. Whenever the narcissist observes the new supply engaging in the same activities you once did, it will only evoke memories of you, creating an emotional connection that cannot be fulfilled. Eventually, the narcissist will realize that they need to rebuild the bridge back to you. This is the moment when hoovering may occur, and they will attempt to re-establish contact. I urge you, do not allow them back into your life. I realize I have gone on a bit of a tangent in this video, but I hope the message I intended to convey is clear. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you found this content helpful, please take a moment to like this video, leave a comment, share your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot and helps spread this important message to others who may need it. Together, we can continue to grow and heal.